Well, so far I'm loving these new Canon RF lenses, and this one is the Canon RF 15 to 35 millimeter f 2.8L IS, as in image stabilization, USM lens. In this video, I'm gonna give you my first impressions and tell you what I think. Stick around. So I've never really been one for zoom lenses. I'm usually shooting prime lenses, uh, especially in the wide angle. I've never owned before 16 to 35 or an 11 to anything lens. My widest zoom I've ever had was the 24 to 70. That was kind of an all purpose zoom. I've never had the 16 to 35, which is a great lens. The EF version, I think it's up to version three now, has always been a great lens, but I've always liked using primes. The ultra wide option I've been using up until now is the 15 millimeter Zeiss 2.8 lens, which is 15 millimeters rather than the 16. That was at the wide end of the Canon EF 16 to 35 zoom. But now, the RF is 15 to 35. It gives me that same wide focal length. Now, is there a big difference between 15 and 16? It's not a big difference, but there's definitely a difference. There's much a bigger difference between 15 millimeters and 16 millimeters as there is between, you know, 70 and 75 millimeters or, or anything. You know, once you get to the longer end, there's much less difference, one millimeter here or there between, a, between the different focal lengths. But at the wide end, 15 to 16 is definitely a difference between 15 millimeter and 16 millimeter. And that's what you want an ultra wide for. You want the ultra wide to be ultra wide. So not why not go as wide as you can? It'd be great if it was 14, but it's not, it's 15, which is as wide as my widest prime lens before. So I figured I'd give it a shot and try it out. And so far, I gotta say, I really love it. I love the design of the new Canon RF lenses. They're very well built, very solid. The zoom ring is wonderful, the focus ring is wonderful, really everything about it. So this is basically size-wise fairly similar to the old 16 to 35 on the EF mount, size-wise. It fits, it's lighter than I thought it was. When I took it out of the box, I actually felt much lighter. It's lighter than the 24 to 70 zoom. And it's actually weighted very, very well. It feels like, you know, most of the weight is kind of right in the middle or maybe even further towards the mount on this lens. So it really feels great mounted to the camera. It doesn't feel front heavy or anything. It really is nicely balanced on the camera and just feels solid. The zoom ring is nice and smooth. It actually does extend a little bit. It doesn't extend a lot. What I don't love is I would rather on the zoomed in portion, I would rather be at 15 and then zoom out to 35. It's just for every other zoom lens I've used, that's what happens. But this is kind of the opposite. On the in position, it's at 35 millimeters, and if you wanna go wider, you twist it, it twists out to 15. It's maybe not even a quarter of a turn. It's like a, a one fifth of a turn around the barrel to zoom from one to the other. So it's really not, you're not really twisting or anything too much. It's very nice and tight. It's very nice and smooth. And then it's got the feature which I love. A lot of people don't like it so much, but I really love uh, is this control ring that it has actually at the outside, which you can assign different things to. You can assign it to change your ISO, your aperture, your shutter speed. Uh, you can use it to exchange uh, for exposure compensation, which is what I've been using it for. Uh, so when I'm composing an image and I'm looking through the viewfinder, I'm getting on the electronic viewfinder, I'm getting the actual real-time exposure when I'm looking through. So, so to be able to hold this in my hand, and while I'm controlling other things with my right hand, to be able to just tweak the exposure a little bit left or right by turning this ring, I find it to be a great thing. Uh, I haven't, I've been using it a lot with my Canon uh, 50 millimeter 1.2. I haven't found that there's been any issue with accidentally twisting it or anything. It really, it just doesn't happen. It's only activated when you're actually, you know, when the camera is activated, when you're actually, you know, in shooting mode. Uh, so the chance of actually rotating this thing accidentally, I've been using it extensively and I haven't had that happen at all. Can't say that it won't happen, but I haven't seen it happen to me at all. So it's got a little uh, thing on the side here for uh, autofocus, manual focus, like all of these lenses do, and it's got image stabilization. And I can't say enough how big a deal it is that image stabilization is in an ultra wide zoom like this Canon 15 to 35. You know, at wide angles, especially really wide like 15, the you know risk of camera shake is a lot, lot less than it is when you're using like a telephoto lens. So even without image stabilization, I should be able to shoot this thing comfortably handheld at like, you know, 1 30th of a second. Uh, if I'm shooting it at 15 millimeters and I'm really holding it tight and stabilizing myself, 
I can shoot it, you know, as slow as 1 15th. Between 15 and 35 millimeters with this, I've been getting sharp shots shooting at a quarter of a second, which is really pretty amazing. Uh, the And that's not, you know, really stabilizing myself or getting down on the ground or anything. That's just kind of holding it up like this and shooting. At a quarter of a second, it's really pretty great that I've been able to use the image stabilization to get shutter speeds that slow. It's a great feature. One day, the Canon R line is going to have in-body image stabilization, and then we'll be able to handhold shots at, you know, one second or two seconds long, and it'll be great. But, you know, for now, lens stabilization, the image stabilization in the lens is all we have, and it really works great on this. The autofocus is nice and fast, just as fast as the other RF lenses that I've been using. Combined with this camera, with the Canon R camera, with how fast the autofocus is in that, and how well it tracks and everything, it's just it's really been an amazing lens to use. But image quality, how good is the image quality? Well, I took the camera out, I've been using it a lot. I've been showing you some pictures here as we go along, I'll show you a few more. Uh, the image quality is really fantastic. Uh, I'm doing a comparison right now with the Zeiss uh, 15 millimeter 2.8 lens, which has been for me for several years now, it, it's been, it's always in my bag. It's one of my favorite lenses to use. Uh, but this now is the same 15 millimeters, same aperture of 2.8. And I'm finding image quality wise, it's it's really comparable. Uh, you know, sharpness is, is dead on all the way into the corners. I'm really not seeing any softness in the corners. And I'm getting nice colors, I'm getting nice contrast, a little bit of distortion, you know, at 15, even at, at 30, you know, at 15 it's kind of like a, uh, like a, a barrel distortion. And then as it goes into 35, it's more of a telephoto distortion. It kind of flips the other way a little bit. Uh, which is okay. It's very easy, this kind of distortion, to correct it in Lightroom. A couple of clicks and those slightly curved lines even out. So distortion really isn't as much of an issue maybe as it was in the past. So there is a little bit of distortion, especially at the 15 millimeter end. A little bit of vignette at the wide end also. But again, easily correctable in Lightroom. And if you're shooting wide open at 2.8, you're gonna have a little bit of vignette. It's, you know, it's just part of the image. So I gotta say overall, I'm thrilled with this lens. Uh, it comes with a lens hood, which is really just a tiny little, I'm gonna use it when I, you know, when I'm not using a filter. If I'm using a filter, it's hard to keep the lens hood on here, especially if it's a circular polarizer. Can't really get your fingers in there to rotate it that easily. Um, but I, I keep my lens hoods on just to protect the lens. And you know, if I'm smacking it around or something, it just doesn't really protect it from any sun or, rain or anything like that it's really just i'll keep it on there just in case i'm smacking it around to protect the lens a little bit so it comes with that it comes with that little canon soft pouch that all the canon lenses come with which i don't know why they may even make them but i guess they have to include some kind of a lens pouch so it comes with that but you don't need it the filter diameter is 82 millimeters which is a little bit big but it's comparable to a lot of other lenses that i have already so I have filters 82, I have circular polarizer, and neutral density, all in 82 millimeters already, so that's pretty standard. But I gotta say, if Canon keeps coming out with these RF lenses uh, that are as good as this one and the 50 millimeter 1.2 and the 70 to 200, uh, I checked out at uh, the camera shop a couple of weeks ago and that one looks great also. I'm gonna be uh, getting my hands on that one eventually and reviewing that. Uh, these lenses really are fantastic. It makes me feel great about my decision to switch from the SLR, from the DSLR Canon 5D4 over to mirrorless uh, about six months ago. It makes me feel great about that decision, knowing that Canon is gonna continue pumping out uh, great items like this, great lenses like this, and they're putting a lot of their focus into uh, creating these great lenses. So with that being said, I love this lens. Uh, check it out. I'm going to put a link to it uh, in the description below. You can check that out. I'm going to put links here at the end to the whole series of Canon R videos that we're doing. And I'll put one here to uh, a video that Bill did about the 16 to 35 in general as a landscape lens and why everybody really needs one. I'm going to be using this one a lot more often now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>